In this video we're going to take a look at um, peak detector circuits. Really useful little circuits uh, for measuring the level of a signal that might exist in your circuit. Uh, so we'll take a quick look at uh, a couple of basics first and then work our way into an op-amp based peak detector. So kind of an interesting application for op-amps. But uh, first we've got to understand how a basic, basic peak detector works. Now we'll start off by just understanding what this little simple circuit would do. This little simple uh, series diode and resistor. We take a look at what that would do as the voltage comes in. Uh, initially when the voltage is at zero, uh, there's going to be no current flowing. The diode will be off, so the output will be zero. And as that voltage begins to rise, you're still not going to get any current flow, any appreciable current flow through that diode until you reach the turn-on voltage of that diode, about six or seven tenths of a volt. And at that point, then the output will actually start rising up. Okay, and you'll actually get an output voltage that will kind of do that. Okay, and uh, where the voltage difference between the input and the output, okay, is always going to be whatever that diode voltage is up here. Okay, because that diode's got to be on. All right. So you know, one of the downsides to this you know type of a circuit is that you know we're not following the input exactly. We're always going to have this diode drop. And uh, if we take a look at that, uh, I've got that on the board right here. I look at it up on the scope. Uh, we can see the signal that I've got right here is only about one volt peak to peak. Okay, so it's only extending, you know, a half a volt above ground and half a volt below ground. So the output in the blue, uh, we don't really see anything. If I turn uh, the signal generator up here to make it say two volts peak to peak, okay, now we can kind of see what I drew on the paper. You know, once this voltage, the input voltage gets up about uh, oh six tenths of a volt or so. Now we see, start to see the output rise. If I bring the output up another click here, that's three volts peak to peak. We can actually see you know, the input voltage and the output voltage. In fact, if I turn some cursors on here, okay, we can actually take a look between the difference between these two peaks. Okay, is about 680 millivolts. Okay, so that's that diode drop. Okay, so uh, now so that's how you know, this simple circuit would work. Now, how do we turn that into a peak detector? Well, the way we turn that into a peak detector is we add a capacitor right here. Because now what will happen is this, all right? As that voltage rises up, we're still going to get you know, kind of that following because the, the capacitor is going to get charged up through that diode. But once this voltage starts to fall, okay, now we've, we've already got this voltage you know, kind of built up on that capacitor. Now the only way the voltage is going to drop on the capacitor is that if current can leave it. So let's assume that the output is not going to draw any current. So the only output, and obviously no current is going to flow back through the diode that way. So the only current that we're going to get is the current going through this resistor. And you can make this resistor pretty high, okay, so that the capacitor will be bled off fairly slowly. In my example here, I didn't make it uh, really high, just so you can kind of see the effect. Okay, so what we'll see then is that the voltage will rise up, and then it will just tend to drop off kind of following an RC time constant that's governed by this resistor and this capacitor. We're going to see, to see it drop off until we get to the point where it'll come back here and start with the next cycle and go up again. Okay, So now we can kind of see that it's, if we made this resistor large, this droop on the peak detector would be smaller and we'd actually follow the peak. But again, in the circuit I did here uh, on the board, I made this resistor not so large so you can kind of see the effect. So if I go on to the board here, and let me throw a, a capacitor in here, okay, and now take a look over at the scope, we can actually see that same effect now. Okay, as the, the input voltage rises up, once it gets to a point where it starts conducting, when the voltage difference between the, you know, across the diode allows the diode to conduct, now we're following the input voltage again. Again, we're gonna see the diode drop between those two. But now when this voltage starts to fall, the voltage on the capacitor is only falling due to that resistor that's across it. If we made the resistor larger, that would fall less and less, and this would straighten out and essentially become a peak detector. So now, it, uh, and or you know, basically just a kind of a DC level. Now you want to kind of choose that bleeder. We call that a bleeder or bleeder resistor. You want to choose that value depending on what uh, you're trying to measure, because if that resistor was extremely high you might detect a noise peak on the cap and it'll hold that charge for a long time and not accurately represent the, the level of the signal you're trying to measure. So you really want to kind of pick 
that RC time constant appropriate for your application. Uh, so what are the pros of this circuit? It's really simple. Okay, you know, three components. Okay, sometimes you don't even need the resistor because the circuit that's looking at this thing might draw enough current off to bleed that cat. But the, the con is that the diode drop limits its usefulness for small signals. Uh, if we take a look at this, and let me drop my signal level down. See, it's just barely detecting there. Go down one more click. I'm down here at now again, one volt peak to peak on the signal, and I'm not detecting a level at all. So. Uh, it is o it's only good for, you know, kind of large signals, or large signals. So let's see how we can use an op-amp to make our life easier. Okay. So, let's see. Got the op-amp based peak detector. Okay. The op-amp based peak detector uh, uses the negative feedback of an op-amp to get rid of that voltage drop. And here's how it works. Okay, we'll have our input signal coming in here. Now, if you remember from the previous video I did on the op amps, is that an op amp connected with negative feedback is going to operate in such a way that uh, the op amp is going to kind of do whatever it can with its output uh, to make the input voltage difference equal to zero. So let's say when this uh, voltage starts rising up, okay, or just as it starts, you know, comes up through zero, starts rising up, what's going to happen here? So that volt, this voltage is just coming up through zero. We know that if everything's working right, this voltage is going to be just coming up through zero. So that's the voltage that's appearing here on this capacitor. So if, uh, if this, this voltage here is just starting to come up through zero, that means it must be getting some charge or some uh, current coming through this diode, which means this diode is turned on. Okay, So it's got a voltage drop across it. So the, the voltage here is essentially one diode drop above that voltage. Okay, So it's kind of riding up in here you know, type of thing. So that all works fine, okay, so that now this output is going to track this input all the way up to the top here. But now what happens when the input voltage starts to fall, okay? So when that input voltage starts, this input voltage starts to fall, okay, that's coming down, this output is going to try to make this output, you know, this come down so that it matches it. But what happens is that it winds up turning this diode off. So this output will automatically just kind of go way down and usually ram down into the the lowest voltage it can go to, the diode gets reverse bias, so it's off. So the voltage here is now just going to be, you know, whatever was left on that cap and whatever's discharging through the resistor or the load. So we're going to get that same kind of a droop. So now we're getting that same droop that I showed earlier, okay, that, you know, due mainly to this RC. But now what'll happen is that'll continue until we hit the next cycle, okay? But the advantage here is that we don't have a diode drop here anymore. The voltage just follows uh, the input all the way to the top. So uh, this uh, op amp here is kind of configured as that op amp. There's kind of just an input resistor. There's my diode, my capacitor sitting under the probe there, and there's that bleeder resistor. Okay, and if we turn on channel three, we can look at the output of that. So uh, so this, this voltage here now is the output of the op amp based peak detector. You can see it kind of follows that peak and then drops off. And uh, again, if we made that bleeder resistor larger, that drop off would be much, much shallower and eventually get to the point where it just kind of rides along those peaks. Again, I did it, uh, I made it kind of a fast discharge here so you can kind of see the effect. Now the advantage is, is as we, we drop down the voltage amplitude, we can see that my diode peak detector, my simple diode capacitor peak detector is no longer detecting anything, but the op amp one is. Even at a lower signal level here, again, if I keep going down, you can see the op amp based peak detector is, is always still working. So it gets rid of that uh, that diode drop that we had in the uh, the very simple peak detector. Okay, it's just kind of following that peak. So uh, here's one example of a, a neat you know op amp circuit using negative feedback to get rid of a diode drop to make a kind of more ideal uh, positive peak detector. So hope you found that helpful. Again, uh, comments, questions and suggestions for more videos are always welcome. Thank you.